Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, we'll be exploring some of the different kinds of color pickers. Color pickers come in a variety of shapes and modes. Let's go ahead and start here in Corel Painter, and this is the triangular color picker. This is found in Corel Painter and several other art applications. And it's made up of two basic components. There is the hue ring, which controls the hue. So yellow, orange, magenta, blue, and so on. And then within the center of that ring is a triangle, and that represents the saturation and the value. So saturation is on this horizontal axis, and that controls the intensity of the color. And value controls the lightness or darkness of the color, and that's on this vertical axis here. If we jump on over to Photoshop, Photoshop has several different color pickers. This one is in a cube format. You can pick the hue over here on the hue strip. It still has the vertical axis for the value, but the saturation is kind of all over the place. Maybe that's easier for you, maybe it's not. But for me, it's a little illogical to have it this way. If we go on over to Sketchable, Sketchable has a spherical color picker, and the sphere is kind of a combination of the cube and the triangle. So for example, I can pick whichever color I want, but there isn't really any sort of logic to this. There are no axes for the value or the saturation. It's just all over the place. Now jumping back over to Photoshop, we have a few different options here for how we can view our color picker. If I click up here in the top right, I can get a sub dialog menu. Right now it's set to hue cube. Let's try brightness cube. And that gives us a completely different color picker. Now we have all of our hues up here in a rainbow. They start out saturated and if you move down, they become desaturated. And then rather than having the hue on a strip here, you have the value and you can make it lighter or darker. Let's go ahead and switch back to the hue cube and let's take a look at some of the other modes. Right now we're looking at an RGB spectrum, but we can also look at a CMYK spectrum, which shows us colors that are more representational of what you'll get when you print. There's also the grayscale ramp if you want just black and white. And many of these applications, you can also tweak the color using sliders. For example, if I go back to Hue Cube, I can put on RGB sliders. And this lets me pick a color using just the sliders here. I can use HSB sliders, that's hue, saturation, and brightness. So here's my hue on a strip. Here's my saturation on a strip, and here's my value or my brightness on a strip. And of course, there's CMYK sliders where we can adjust the cyan, the magenta, the yellow, and the black to pick a color. And there's lab color as well, and web color if you want colors that are going to work well on the web. Now, in my opinion, out of all of these options, I prefer the triangle color picker. And that's because it's very logical. You have your value on this axis, you have your saturation on this axis, and you have your hue ring. There isn't a whole lot of redundancy, and what I mean by redundancy is repetition of colors that are already there. If I want to get a dark green, I go down here. If I want to get a saturated green, I go here. If I want to get a light green, I go here. And that's not only easier for me to pick color, it's easier for me to explain to my students how to pick color. If we jump back over here to Photoshop, you can see that there's a lot of space wasted here in the Hue Cube. However, you might find that some areas, for example, like the darker areas, are a little bit easier to pick on the Hue Cube because the Hue Cube is more spread out whereas the color triangle gets a little more condensed down in these areas. And so if you're trying to pick a muted or a saturated green down in this dark area, you don't have very much room to move back and forth. However, by eye, you don't really see much of a difference in these colors here anyways. Same goes for up in the corner here. This whole corner here just looks like white, whether it's a saturated white or a desaturated white, there's really not a whole lot of difference. And same goes for this end here. This whole triangle area is all basically the same color. And I would have to say that the spherical selector is probably my least favorite. So there you go. That's a look at some of the different kinds of color pickers available in digital art applications. This is by no means all of the different kind of color pickers available, but these are some of the most popular and most commonly used ones. If you found this information helpful, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more digital art videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.